So we've reached an important point in our discussion of uh, what trigonometry is and uh, how we're going to analyze triangles and circles and talk about cyclic functions and take a look at what waves look like on a graph, right? And, you know, we've done a fair bit so far and we'll do a little recap, we'll, we'll do a little setup, but uh, for anyone that wants to skip the setup and you've already been following the videos, just to let you know what we're about to do, I'm going to draw another unit circle here okay and we're going to create a table here and the table that we're going to create is what the three primary trig ratios are for the unit circle as we move around the unit circle okay and we're going to create the table for the special right triangles and the four quadrants the nodes right for theta and radians, right? So we're gonna find out what the three primary trig ratios are for 0, 30, 60, 90, and multiples of that all the way up to 360 and the equivalent of it in radians, okay? And this table that we're going to create is something that I tell all of my students that as far as I'm concerned, every trigonometry test in the world the first question asked should be generate this table. And this isn't about memorizing this table. If you, because if you're trying to memorize mathematics, you're gonna fail. Uh, mathematics is not about memorization, it's about understanding, it's about using, right? You don't memorize a language, you learn how to use a language. Mathematics is the same thing, especially when it comes to uh, this table that we're about to generate, right? So this isn't about memorizing this table. This is about learning how to generate this table. And I'm gonna take, you know, a fairly long time explaining how we get all the answers, uh, get all the ratios or the three primary trick ratios for the unit circle in this video. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna produce, there's two more videos coming of the same thing. And one of them is gonna be a little bit longer than the other one. And the other, um, the shortest one is just basically me without giving any commentary and just generating the table. And what you should do is if, if you know how to generate this table, then fantastic. Uh, we can continue on with uh, what, you know, our discussion of trigonometry. If you don't know how to generate this table, you need to take the time to learn this table. And this table basically talks about, you know, what our ratios are for a unit circle, what the three trig ident uh, ratios are, how we convert between radians and degrees, um, what the value, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate are for us moving around the unit circle. And these are all really sort of the basis of what we need to know before we can actually start using trigonometry, right? Start looking at certain systems, okay? and. I'm making these three videos basically because I want there to be a, you know, extended discussion of how to generate this table. And then there, ha there needs to be a video of walking through how you can do it rapidly. And one as a sort of a quick review for anyone about to writing the tests of how they go about doing it, right? Because what I, what I do actually tell my students is, whenever they're writing trigonometry exams for grade 12 specifically higher level trig, right? Um, when they get their tests, for them just to put their name on the test, right? So if you're writing a trig exam, as soon as you get the test, you put your name on the test and you put that test aside. And the first thing you do is you take one of the scrap pieces of paper available to you and you generate what we're about to generate, okay? Because that information is going to prevent you from making any silly mistakes during the test. And it's also gonna provide a lot of the answers to a lot of the questions in most trigonometry tests, right? Because if you know how to generate this table, you understand the three trig ratios, you understand the unit circle, you understand degrees, you understand radians, how to switch between the two. You understand what the trig ratios mean, which are basically your X and Y coordinates, right? So basically, by learning how to generate this table, you understand almost everything we've talked about in the previous videos and now sort of a critical point where we can progress further right because as soon as we understand this as soon as we know how to generate this there's two different avenues we can go in trigonometry one of them is sort of 
um, we did a little teaser, well, a long teaser, right? when we graph the trig functions, right? When we graph the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So one thing we're going to do when we finish, you know, learning how to generate this table is go down the avenue of taking a look at trig functions and how they, you know, how they model certain systems and start graphing certain systems, right? The other branch you can go down in trigonometry is taking a look at trig identities, and we will do that as well, right? So as soon as you learn this, um, how to generate this table, there's two, two different avenues you can go in your study of trigonometry, and it's up to you which direction you want to go. Um, for me, I'm going to take a look at the functions first, and then we're going to look at the trig identities because uh, trig identities is more playing with the language and the relationship between the different ratios in the unit circle. The trig functions, take, looking at the trig functions and how to graph them and what they represent is more taking trigonometry and applying it in the real world and taking a look at certain systems that we want to analyze, okay? So that's what we're going to do for anyone that wants to skip the setup. For now, what we're going to do is I'm going to create another unit circle here. Uh, I'm going to set up my table here and there's going to be, you know, a little reminder here that, um, that the information we're going to present here in shorthand and short form for us to generate this table. And what we're going to put on this page is what you need to be able to generate before you write any major trigonometry test. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is create another circle, right? So what I'm going to do is go find my center here again, and I got my floss. Where's the loop? We got the loop here. I think this loop is getting pretty tight there. And I'm going to throw this guy on here, and then we're going to go around, right? So let's go down again i think this was 24 i've done it enough i should know what it is right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so here's 12 and then we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine i believe we're doing nine circle a little bit but that's okay can't make it all perfect right so now that we've got the circle set up let's go set up our grid yeah because that's what we want and we're gonna set that up using our little lever again right and uh, green so let's do this Right. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about theta and degrees, radians, sine, cos, and tan. And these are going to be our rows, right? And what we're going to do, I want to create the table. So I'm going to leave a little space. So let's do this. And then we need how many? Zero degrees. Zero, 30. 60, 90, 120, 135, 150, 180. We're going all the way here. Okay, this was second one in. All right, second one in. So I'm going to go to the second one in. Should be doing this here too. So rad. That's better. Now we can do it in one shot. Oh crap, I got it. That's exactly what I said I wouldn't do. Mm, 
Perfect. Okay, so we got this, we got this. So what I've done so far is generated our unit circle, the circle, put it on a Cartesian coordinate system, right? And what I've done is created a table. And usually this table I generate, you know, it's one long table, right? Going from zero degrees all the way to 360 degrees. But because we're limited on the space that we have here, I've broken this down into two segments, right? And what we're going to do, we've I've broken this thing down into the rows being radians, degrees, sine, cosine, and tangent, right? Our three primary trig ratios, angle and degrees and angle and radians. And what we're going to do, we're going to walk around the unit circle. So we're gonna start off here, right? As we have in the past videos, right? And we're gonna move around the circle right and we're going to look at what happens to our three primary trig ratios as we move around the circle right we're going to look at the ratios and the ratios as we've talked about before as we move around this right if this is one two three four five six seven eight and nine so we'll go four and a half one two three four and a half. as we move around let's say we go here right we end up here the three, the two primary trig ratios anyway, the sine and cosine are just basically our y and x axis, right? Our x axis being cos theta, our y axis being sine theta, right? As we've talked about before. So what we're going to do, we're gonna take a look at our coordinates, right? As we move around the circle, which basically means we're going to take a look at what our y value is and what our x values are going to be right at each of the stops for the special right triangles and the nodes right and it's going to be you know we're going to record it all figure it out throw it on here right and what we're going to need to do is know how to generate this before we continue on in studying trigonometry right because once you know how to generate this it means you understand everything else we've talked about previously and that's the key right we just built the foundation of trigonometry right and what we're doing right now is saying that we know how to you know what it's all about what the what the trigonometry what trigonometry the system is right we're we're stating that we understand how triangles are related to circles. We're stating that we understand what it means to move around a circle, right? How our coordinate changes. We, by generating this, we state that we understand what a cyclic function is and how wave graphs, right? And we're gonna do it again for radians because we've already sort of jumped the gun and graph sine cosine and tangent for theta and degrees but we're going to do the same thing again after we generate this table for radians right because we're going to mainly work with radians okay so i can't emphasize this enough for us to progress in studying trigonometry either going down the the path where we're going to look at functions graph functions and take a look at how cyclic functions you know, we can manipulate cyclic functions or how cyclic functions um, are related to, you know, the unit circle trigonometry, right? Or if we're going to go down the road of uh, trig identities, right? Where we're messing around with the system and seeing how things are related, right? No matter which branch you're going to go off, you need to be able to generate this table, okay? And as I stated before, as far as I'm concerned, the first question on every trigonometry test should be generate this table, not memorize, but generate. Because if you're memorizing this, it doesn't mean it means nothing. Really, it's uh, it, 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 you're not saying that you understand the system. You're just saying that you know how to memorize something. Now, the question is, do you know how to use this? 
right? And the reason the first question in every trig test should be generate this table is because we're going to use this table for almost everything we do from now on, right? So instead of trying to always do single calculations, right? Figure out what a certain ratio is. What we're going to do is we're going to have this table as a reference, right? So when given a certain radian, we can find out what it is in degrees. We can find out what the trig ratios are, right? When given a certain trig ratio, we can go up and find out how that stuff is related to the other trig ratios as well as the angle and degrees and radians, right? So it's going to be really handy. And most trig tests that you end up writing, uh, a lot of, well, many of the questions are just basically this table parts of this table the an answer from this table right and this is basically for our special triangles as the nose we move around the unit circle okay so what we're going to do is we're going to lay down the degrees first because that's the one we're really familiar with right and as we talked about the first degree we're going to look at is zero and then we're going to go to 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees right and that's the first quadrant right so we're going to go theta in degrees is going to be 0 30 45 60 and 90 right and one of the most beautiful things about trigonometry is not that well for sure that it it's uh, uh, circles it represents the ideal cyclic function that once we start here we go all the way around we do it again right so as long as we understand one rotation we understand every other rotation right so circles unit circle is a cyclic function it repeats so there's huge symmetry within this right one of the other beautiful aspects of a circle is is if we understand what's going on in this quadrant then we understand what's going on in the other three quadrants with slight modifications right because this thing this quadrant here we can just mirror it here and then flip it down and then flip it down and that's what's going to happen for this table all we really need to learn is what happens in the first first quadrant because everything else is sort of copied from this is generated from this with it either being positive or negative right or changing the sign being negative because all of the stuff in this quadrant is positive right so what we're going to do is learn what's going to happen in the first quadrant and then take a look at what happens in the second third and fourth and you'll see the beauty of it how symmetrical it is right so the first angles we had we had zero degrees 30 degrees 45 60 90 the next special angle that we have on a unit circle is we're going to go 90 and we're going to add 30 right and then we're going to add 45 and then we're going to add 60 and then we're going to add another 90 right and then when we get to 180 we're going to add 30 we're going to add 45 we're going to add 60 and then we're going to add 90 when we get to 270 we're going to add 30 we're going to add 45 we're going to add 60 and we're going to add 90 and we're back here right so that's how we're going to generate the rest of the angles in degrees and they're just basically multiples of the first quadrant right so and from 90 degrees right from here we're going to go 30 so 90 we're going to add 30 degrees so that's 120 degrees right and whenever i'm generating this table and whenever you generate this table you're going to need both hands okay or you're going to have to be able to you know have a good track with your eye because all that's going to happen is we're going 90 plus 30 is the next special angle and then 90 plus 45 is 135 right and then 90 plus 60 is 150 and then 90 plus 90 is 180 degrees right that's how we generate the rest of the angles and degrees okay and we're going to do the same thing in this in these quadrants right because we're at 180 degrees and then we're going to add 30 which is 210 right now again I usually generate this table when I'm working with it on one piece of paper 
from you know zero degrees to 360 or zero degrees to 360 degrees all in one shot right that way i can scan it and go down um, the table and pick things off right but because we're limited on space we're going to have to have you know break it up into two pieces and by doing that what i have to do is make this column the 180 column as well okay so keep this in mind this guy when you're generating in one sheet and we will do it in one one column or one table uh this guy is just an overlap of here okay so this guy is going to be 180 degrees right and then we're going to add 30 so 180 plus 30 is 210 180 plus 45 is going to be 225 180 plus 60 is uh, 240 degrees 180 plus 90 is 270 degrees right and then again we're going to add 30 45 60 so 270 plus 30 is 300 270 plus 45 is 315 270 plus 60 is 330 270 plus 90 is 360 okay and that's how you generate the degrees column as we move around this thing right and if we're gonna you know i'm not gonna put on the lines here because it's gonna get really busy right but what we're going to do we're gonna put the ticks for the x's and y's right so basically what we've done right now is let's just draw the little dots of where we are right so this one is going to be 30 degrees if we do one triangle here and then we got 45 here and then 60 is going to be about the same distance here so let's do here here yeah so it should be one two three four and a bit yep, so right here okay and let's generate the trig ratios for these guys and then we'll continue the dots around and you'll see how that stuff lines up for the x's and y's right so what we've got right now is we need to figure out what our trig ratios are for these guys, right? Now, one thing we're gonna have to do to give us a reminder, because I don't, I don't like memorizing, going to memory every time and picking out uh, what the special triangles are, what the ratios of the special triangles are, what their sides are, and what the unit circle is, because I'm not gonna draw a unit circle like this exactly every time I'm gonna work with, uh, in trigonometry, right? Whenever I'm gonna generate this table, I'm just gonna make it shorthand, right? really fast so what we're gonna do up top here is we're gonna throw throw just a circle here very simple but it's gonna remind us of what we're really working with right it's, it's a good trigger for your memory to kick you into trigonometry mode okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna draw a unit circle here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that's gonna be center I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to try to generate this as clean as possible. Uh, so let's go here, 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 and here. So let's throw a unit circle on here. Let's see. I'm gonna use, uh, use this guy. It's hard to do. Uh, I tried it once before doing it with the floss, but doing a little circle, very difficult, very difficult, right? So I'm just gonna do this. Hopefully this comes out cleaner, right? So we have a unit circle here, okay? And this point here is going to be one and zero, right? This point here is going to be zero and one. This point here is going to be negative one and zero. This point here is going to be zero and negative one, right? 
as we've talked about before if this is a unit circle the radius is one and those are the coordinates for your x and your y axis and your x axis happens to be cos theta and your y axis happens to be sine theta right and if you need a reminder you can put that down you can say this is cos theta and that's sine theta right the other thing we need we need are two special triangles that cover 30s 45 and 60 degrees right so i'm going to plop this down here as well okay now let's do one two three let's do it here one two three actually let's go from here to here and So these are our two special triangles and you know for lack of a better word this is something you're gonna have to memorize but it should be something that you've used a lot so it should be you know more instinctive generating this than anything right so the special triangles uh, should be 30 60 and 90 degrees right and across from the smallest angle we put one across from 60 is going to be square root of 3 and across from 90 is going to be 2 right and for the 45 45 90 degrees 45 45 90 degrees is going to be 1 1 square root of 2 okay and we talked about how you can generate these things right so it's not really that you're memorizing it is that you understand it you've worked with it enough that you know it right so what we're going to do now is take a look at what sine of zero degrees is 35 45 60 degrees and 90 degrees is and then we're going to generate the radians for this and the other two trig uh, ratios cos and sine cos and tan for this right so let's do sine theta first okay sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse right so let's just draw one triangle here so every time we refer to it hopefully you're familiar you're comfortable with it and we've got something that we can point to right So we're going to take a look at sine theta first, and this is our angle here, right, in standard position, right, all the terminology we've learned. So sine of zero degrees, sine is our y, right? So if we're at zero degrees, this guy is flat, right? The terminal arm is right there. So sine of this is what the y value is when you're standing here. And when you're standing here, your y value is zero, right? Sine of zero degrees happens to be zero, right? Sine of 30 degrees, right? What we're gonna do, we're gonna look at our special triangle, right? So for the nodes, for zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360, we're gonna look at the unit circle. 
right? For the other angles and multiples of them, 30, 45, 60, we're going to look at the special triangles. So sine of zero degrees, we're here. The y for this, when at this position, is zero, right? So sine of zero is zero. Sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Y over R, right? So it's one over two, so it's a half. So sine of 30 degrees is one over two. Sine of 45 degrees is one over root two. And if you want to rationalize the denominator that we've talked about is root two over two. So, but I'm, I'm going to write down one over root two because I'm comfortable with working it that way. When we, maybe we'll switch it up per 45, right? So this is going to be one over root two. Sine of 60 degrees is root three over two. And sine of 90 degrees, we're not using the special triangles anymore. We're going to use a unit circle. So we're up here, right? So at 90 degrees, we're up here. And our y value for that for a unit circle is 1, right? So sine of 90 degrees is 1. Okay. As for what these numbers mean, uh, a lot of people I found, they have a... It's, it's sort of difficult at first trying to appreciate what these values mean. But if we're talking a unit circle, right? Right? If we're talking a unit circle, our radius happens to be 1, right? So this point here is 1 and 0, right? As we laid out here. And as we're moving up, our y value is increasing, right? Maximum point we can go to is 1, right? So this is 0 and 1, right? If we're standing here. Okay. So what the trig ratios are is where we are on the y-axis. So when we're at 30 degrees, the y coordinate is 1 over 2. Right? So here is a half. Right? That means this point here is a half. Okay. So let's take a look at what our cos value is, right? How how far along we are on the on the x-axis, right? Cos of zero, we're here, right? We're here. Our x value is 1, right? Our x is 1, so cos of 0 is 1. Cos of 30 degrees, we hit up the special triangles, the adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Cos of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. Oh, sorry, yeah, 1 over root 2. Uh, cos of 60 degrees is 1 over 2. And cos of uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, we're up here. Our x value has gone down to 0, right? And then we're going to go into the negative part, but we've gone to 0. Our x value is 0. That means cos of 90 degrees is 0. Okay. Now, one of the first symmetries you should be noticing right now is that cos and sine are mirrors of each other right because if you take a unit circle if you take a circle really and this is our y-axis that's our x-axis if you rotate this 90 degrees the x-axis becomes the y-axis and the y-axis becomes the x-axis so it's sort of a mirror of each other or a rotation right so one symmetry that we have when we're generating this table is when you generate the sine values, all you have to remember is the cos mirrors the sine with the center point being the axis of symmetry, really the mirror, not the axis of symmetry, but the mirror point, well, axis of symmetry as well, but the mirror point being 45. So when sine is one here, cos is one here, 
root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, because that's our mirror point. 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 0, 0. So they're sort of, you know, mirror of each other, right? So as long as you can generate sine, you can generate cos. If you want, if you don't want to look at these guys, right? Now, tan is sine divided by cos, and it also happens to be opposite over um, adjacent, right? So we can generate the tan ratios from either taking sine and dividing it by cos, right? Or looking at the special right triangles. I use both for this because for the nodes, for 0, 90, two, uh, 180, and 270, I use the division sine divided by cos. For the other angles, 30, 45, and 60, I use the special right triangles. I use these two guys. So 10 of 0 degrees is sine divided by cos when we're here. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Tan of 30 degrees is, I go to the 30 degree special right triangle. Tan is 1 over root 3. Tan of 45 degrees is 1 over 1, opposite over adjacent, right? So it's 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1, right? Tan of 60 degrees is root 3 over 1. So it's root 3. Tan of 90 degrees, I'm at a node. I'm at the top of the quadrant here. So I'm going to use sine divided by cos. And 1 divided by 0 is undefined. We can't divide by 0, right? One of the limitations we have in mathematics, right? So 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Okay. So we just figured out what our three trig ratios are. As far as what the cos numbers mean well they're the same as the sine values right oh we forgot to put these sticks in right so we'll do this right now so for the 30 degrees so for the 30 degree angle when we're at 30 degrees our y value is 1 over 2 right sine theta is 1 over 2 cos theta is root 3 over 2 and that's just a number right that's the square root of 3 over two right so if we grab a calculator what does that mean square root of three over two let's bring out the trusty solar calculator again right this thing keeps on ticking so three square root where's my square root there it is square root of three divided by so square root of three is 1.73 right 1.73 so that's what the square root of 3 is. Divide that by 2, divided by 2, is 0 0.8660 dot 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 repeating, right? So that's just that number. It's a coordinate system, right? So when I write down our coordinate here is square root of 3 over 2 and 1 over 2, right? All I'm saying is on a Cartesian coordinate system, when you're moving around the unit circle a circle with radius one if you're 30 degrees up right where you are is your x value is 0 0.866 dot 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 and your y value how high up you are on the y-axis is 0.5 right that's all it means okay and for the 45 degrees when you're standing here and this is our 60 degrees when you're standing at 45 degrees uh, sine of 45 is 1 over root 2 right so your this value here is 1 over square root of 2 and the cos of 45 is 1 over square root of 2 right so cos is 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 and that's I think it's 707 seven. let's do this so 1 divided by 2 second function square root is uh, 7.071 dot dot dot. So your coordinate here is your x and y are your x is 1 over root 2 
and your y is 1 over square root of 2, right? When you're at 60 degrees, right, your y value is um, your sine theta is square root of 3 over 2, and your cos is 1 over 2, right? It's the flip of 30 degrees, right? So this coordinate is 1 over, oops, 1 over 2, and your y is square root of 3 over 2. So here, we're at square root of 3 over 2. And here, we're at a half. Okay. So, now that we did the three trig ratios, we found out what our coordinate system is in the first quadrant as we move along, you know, these angles. Let's take a look at what these angles are in radians. And uh, we've talked about this converting between degrees and radians. And I showed you the long way to do it with the ratios, uh, especially, you, you know, you need to use that if you don't have special angles. The other way I showed you was multiples of pi, right? So that's what we're going to do to generate all the radians for all of these degrees. So what we're going to do right now is generate the radian column since we're on it. Okay. So zero degrees in radians is zero. You're at zero radians. We know that already, right? 360 degrees is two pi. We know that already, right? 180 degrees is pi radians, right? Half of 360, if you go full rotation, 360 degrees means two pi radians. And we talked a lot about this already. That means 180 degrees is pi, right? So 180 degrees is pi. Now, in the first quadrants, we can get to all of these angles in degrees from 180, right? So to find out what 30 degrees is in radians, we look at 180 degrees, right? So we ask ourselves, what do we do to 180 degrees to get to 30 degrees? What do we do eight, what do we do to 18 to get three? We divide 180 degrees by six, right? 180 degrees divided by six is 30 degrees. Well, the beauty of mathematics is, is very symmetrical, right? So you're gonna do, you're gonna divide 180 degrees by six to get to where you wanna be, which is 30 degrees right now. Then we're gonna do the same thing to radians. So pi over six is 30 degrees. right 45 degrees what do we do to 180 degrees to get to 45 degrees we divide it by four there's four 45s and 180 right you got one two three four 45s right well if we're going to do it to 180 we're going to do it to pi so 45 degrees is pi over four what do we do to 60 degrees what do we do to 180 degrees to get to 60 degrees, we divide 180 by three, we do the same thing to pi. So pi divided by three is 60, right? Pi over three. 90 degrees, we divide 180 by two, right? So we're gonna divide pi by two. So 90 degrees is pi over two. Okay. Now, all the other angles 120 all the way to 330 are multiples of 30, 45, 60, right? Because that's what they are. We're moving around with the same displacement in the angles anyway, same, same angle changes, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so what we're going to do to find out what these angles are in radians, we're going to look at the first quadrant and we're going to multiply the angles in the first quadrant by something, right? So we ask ourselves, 120 degrees, we can't get to 120 degrees directly from 180, right? Well, we can, but it's a fraction. We wanna make the calculations easy, right? So we go to 120 degrees and we ask ourselves, what do we do? How do we get to 120 degrees from one of these angles? 
30, 45, and 60. Well, we could multiply 30 by 40, 30 by 4, that gives us 120, right? So that means in radians, we do the same thing. This would be 4 pi over 6. But then we have to reduce the fraction. So what we do, we go to the biggest number that we have to get to 120 degrees. So 60 times 2 gives you 120. So we're going to do the same thing to pi over 3. So pi over 3 times 2 is the same thing as 120 degrees, right? So 120 degrees in radians is going to be 2 pi over 3, right? Now, to get to 135 degrees, 135 is multiples of 45, right? And we multiply 45 by 1, 2, 3, right? There's 345 is 135. So I'm going to multiply pi over 4 by 3. So 135 degrees is 3 pi over 4, okay? 150 degrees? The only number I can use from the 30, 45 to 60 to get to 150 directly with one multiplication, one integer, right, is 30 degrees. So 30 times 5 gives me 150. So I'm going to multiply pi over 6 by 5, which is 5 pi over 6, right? Okay. Now, 180, we already know what it is in radians. Right, so that's just pi. Okay, so this column is just going to be everything the same as this column. 210 degrees, I'm going to multiply 30 by 7, right? 3 times 7 gives me 21, so 30 times 7 gives me, uh, so it's going to be 7 pi over 6, okay? 225 degrees is multiples of 45 and I always do this for 45 I never can do it you know by memorization so 45 times 1 2 3 4 5 45 times 5 gives me 225 so 5 times 5 pi over, uh, 5 times pi over 4 so 5 pi over 4 is 125 degrees 240 degrees I get there from 60 okay so 6 times 4 gives me um, 24 right 60 times 4 gives me 240 so I'm going to multiply pi over 3 by 4 so 240 degrees is going to be 4 pi over 3 270 degrees is 90 times 3, so it's going to be 3 pi over 2. 300 degrees, I can get there with 30 and with 60. I'm going to go there with 60 because that way I don't have to reduce my fraction, right? So 60 times 5 gives me 300 degrees. So 300 degrees is going to be 5 pi over 3. 315 degrees is multiples of 45, right? So I was at 545s when I was at 225. 5, 6, 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 45s. So it's going to be 7 pi over 4. And 330 degrees, I'm going to get there using 30 degrees. 30 times 11 is 330. So 11 times pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6. And then we have 360 degrees, which is 2 pi. And one thing you should have meant, noticed here as well is the symmetry within this, right? Because all we're doing is sort of doing a rotation like this. We're going to 90, and then we're coming back. Okay, 
So what's going on here is... So what's going on here is we're going to 90 degrees, right? And then we're going boom, 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 and then 180, okay? And then if we're here, if this was one column, we're 180 and then 270, uh, sorry, 210 and 150 are multiples of pi over 6. 135 and 225 are multiples of pi over 4. 240 and 120 are multiples of pi over 3. And then we're at 270, right? 270 on either side were multiples of pi over 3, multiples of pi over 4, multiples of pi over 6. Okay, there's a lot of symmetry within this table. That's why it's really easy to generate. Um, and it's not really about memorization, it's about appreciation, right? It's about generating it. And the reason the symmetry exists is because let's do 90 degrees here. If we're at 90 degrees, 60 degrees is 100, and 120 degrees are going to have the same magnitude up on the x-axis and the same magnitude along uh, sorry same magnitude up on the y-axis and the same magnitude along the x-axis right so if we're sitting here if we're sitting here and this is 120 degrees right our x value or sorry our y our y value is again root 3 over 2 right that's our horizontal we're right there our x value, if you come down, that's going to be the same distance along as it was in the positive direction, right? So our x value here becomes one, two, three, four and a half. Our x value here becomes one over two. It just happens to be negative, right? Because we're in a negative x quadrant, right? So our coordinate system here is our x is negative 1 over 2 and our y value is root 3 over 2 okay my red pen is dying let's see if we get a better red pen When we're at 45 degrees, we're here. Our y value is going to be the same, right? right? If we're standing here. Right? And our x value is going to be the same distance along on the positive x-axis as it was in the negative x-axis, right? So if our x value here is going to be 1 over root 2, but negative so our x value is negative 1 over root 2 and our y value is 1 over root 2 right that's the symmetry that we see when we're standing here when we're going across we just went 30 degrees on either side of the 90 degree angle so our y value better be the same and our x value is the same right the next one is 45 We've gone 45 on either side, and then we're here. Our y value is the same, and our x value is the same. The next one is 60 degrees on either side of the 90 degree angle, right? Well, 60 degrees is going to bring us back to 30, and it's going to bring us to 150 degrees, right? If you see it here, you're at 150 degrees. Okay. Oh, sorry, right here. We're at 150 degrees, right? So we're right here. And that's the beauty of the symmetry, right? And our x value is going to be negative. Square root of 3 over 2. I'm just reading it off here. I'm just making it negative, right? And our y value is going to be 1 over 2. So this is negative square root of 3 over 2. And that's 1 over 2. Okay. And that's what we're going to do right now is 
generate these guys right so the symmetry that exists here as soon as you come here you hit 90 degrees for these guys they repeat you go back so sine of 120 degrees is root 3 over 2 sine of 135 is the same as sine of 45 right sine of 135 degrees you're here right well that's going to be the same value as sine of 45 degrees right same y value right uh, <laughs> one over root two jeez louise one over square root of two right sine of 150 degrees is going to be the same as sine of 30 degrees so one over two and then where you're at 180 degrees it's zero okay and this should be square root right so when you're 180 degrees your y coordinate is zero and your x coordinate is going to be negative one which we're going to take a look at right so right here we're at negative one and zero okay let's do cos well cos does the same thing the symmetry exists from each quadrant to the next both well for sine cos and tan right so as soon as we generate the sine, we can generate the cos for the first quadrant, and we can generate the tan. And then once we got the first quadrant here for the three trig ratios, we have the rest because it's just a mirror of each other. So as soon as you hit zero, so you're coming along, you go, right? 30, 45, 60, 90, and then you go back again. So the mirror point on this is going to be a half, one over root two, and root three over two, right? And one. The only catch is that you have to remember is when you're in the second quadrant, your X values are negative. That's why these guys are negative, right? So your X values are negative their magnitude is the same, their absolute value is the same. So all you do now is make this negative, 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 okay? The 10, same thing, same symmetry. You're at 90 degrees, on either side is going to be square root of three, one, one over square root of three, and zero, right? And since 10 is sine divided by cos, right? then positive over negative is negative so the tan values here are also negative 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 okay as for the remaining stuff here well let's draw our circles put our little dots one two three four i'm just going to line it up with this when we're here We're going to be here, and we're going to be here, right? I'm just lining them up, right? right? Our X values are going to be the same, and our Y values are going to be the same as these guys, but they're going to be negative. So if I come over, oops, this guy should be around here. Negative a half negative one over square root of two All right Let's see if this comes up better and negative negative root three over two So it repeats again, it does a rotation, right? So all I do with this is, when I'm doing the signs, when I come to one, 
I go boink, 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 boink. So I'm at zero. I'm just going to copy this column down here. Zero, negative one, and zero. Okay. So when I'm here, again, this guy repeats. So it's just going to be right a half right it's just going to be these guys so one over two one over square root of two root three over two and one right but this is in the third quadrant and we're talking about sine and sine happens to be y so we're in the third quadrant we moved along here now we're down here sine is negative here so all of these numbers are mirrored but they're negatives right because sine is negative and then when i get here i do the same thing i go back again right because what i'm doing i'm standing here and then i'm coming back up again right so i'm the same distance away as this guy right it's the same distance here okay so this guy is going to mirror again so 300 degrees is going to be the same as 240 degrees for the y value, right? 240 degrees, I'm here, my y value is this. 300 degrees, I'm here, my y value is this, right? So again, it mirrors. So negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 over root 2, negative 1 over 2, and 0, right? And again, it's negative because sine is negative in this quadrant right as for cos well that was a negative one and I go back again right which is basically the same as this so it's going to be root 3 over 2 1 over root 2 1 over 2 0 right when I get to 0 I'm just going to mirror it again 1 over 2 1 over square root of 2 root 3 over 2 and the oops one and one now cos this is in the second quadrant right oh sorry third quadrant right cos is still negative so my x is negative so my cos is going to be negative right this is in the fourth quadrant i'm over here now and my x-axis is positive so my cos is positive 10, same deal. I'm just going to write these down. I hit 0, and I'm going to go back again in this way. Or I hit 0, so I'm going to go this way, right? 1 over root 3, 1, root 3, undefined, and then mirror again, root 3, 1, 1 over root 3, and 0, right? Now, all I have to do is make sure it's pot, you know, figure out which one's positive, which one's negative. Tan is sine divided by cos. If sine is negative, cos is negative, then they're negative. Over here, sine is negative, cos is positive. So tan is negative. Okay. And the values here would have been, if we're drawing this, might as well put our little guy here, right? So we're here. We're here, I guess, yeah, and we're here, right? And these guys line up with these, right? And, right? and that's us moving around the unit circle, right? Generating the table and figuring out what our coordinates are, our x and y's are, where sine and cosine are as we move around the circle, right? Now. I guess I should put those things there, but my red pen is dying off. So I'll leave those guys empty, okay? And this is something that we have to learn. We have to know how to generate. And if you're writing a test for me, if I was giving you a test, the first question on my trigonometry test would be generate this table. And what you would have to do is you would draw this, the unit circle, you would draw that and you would draw that. This is the only thing you need to be able to generate this because from this you get your degrees you get your sign 
And once you have your sign, you can get your coast because that's the mirror along 45, or you can just read it off the special right triangles in a unit circle, right? You can get your 10 and we get our radians from the pi, from the ratios, right? And just a little note, if you want to remember this uh, or, you know, understand it, anything that you see that has pi over six is a multiple of 30 degrees, right? Anything you see that has pi over four is a multiple of 45 degrees. Anything you see that has pi over three is a multiple of 60 degrees. And anything you see that has pi over two is a multiple of 90 degrees, right? So if we come over here, and we see pi over four, then pi over four is a multiple of 45 degrees. So seven pi over four means seven times 45. And what we're going to do is in the next video is uh, uh, do one, generate this table with commentary, but go through it much faster, right? I'm not gonna explain all this stuff. I'm gonna assume we know what these numbers mean now, right? So you basically, what your coordinate system as you move around the circle right and uh, the second part of it or in the next video is going to be us doing it generating a table without any commentary as if you would on a test right because as soon as you get your test you're going to write down your name put that test aside grab a scrap piece of paper and generate this table and hopefully it'll take you less than two minutes to generate this whole thing and you'll have that table beside you to answer a lot of questions during the test right it's gonna give, provide you answers for a lot of it right because for example let's assume you know a question would ask you uh, find theta in radians for when sine theta is equal to negative one over two so all you have to do now is go to your sine theta go across find negative one over two. Oh, we got one negative one over two and another negative one over two. So the angle in degrees of sine theta for negative one over two is either seven pi over six or 11 pi over six, right? Easy peasy. Uh, it's one of the first types of questions you get on a test, right? Or they could ask you, give the three trig ratios for uh, I don't know, five pi over four. So you would come down here and go, oh, sine, sine of five pi over four is negative one over root two, negative one over root two for cos and one for tan, right? They can ask you to convert 150 degrees to radians. And all you would do is come up here and go 150 degrees is five pi over six, right? We end up using this a lot, okay? In the next video, we're gonna generate this and then after that, there's two different pathways we're going to go down. One of them is graphing trig functions using radians mainly because we've graphed them in this, you know, one of the first videos we did just as a teaser, just to see what these graphs looks like. The other path we're going to go is taking a look at identities and seeing how identities come into play and how we can manipulate the relationship between these ratios and what we know of right angle triangles and circles and come up with exact values for other things other than just these angles right other angles right and the way you should think about this is this basically is us creating a whole universe right creating a system that explains many other systems within our reality within within our everyday lives right as for why this is important because uh, cyclic functions are dominant within our with, with our experience of life right within a lot of systems that we function under as well as how we perceive life right how we perceive reality right and what we're going to do is manipulate the basic cyclic function that we have which is the unit circle the simplest wave we can think of and we're going to see what other types of waves what other types of systems we can take a look at I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.